Hey everyone, once been here at the Battle Report. So this is game one of the Brawler Bash Tournament 2015, My Empire versus an Ogre Army. And this is a grudge match. Um, Materum invited me, Materum, who has a YouTube channel you should check out, invited me to play in round one uh, as a grudge match. We've never really played each other, so there's not much of a grudge going on. But I thought it'd be fun, and, and it certainly was. So Brawler Bash is a 3,000 point tournament. Uh, it's very unique in that you only get points for stuff that you kill. It doesn't matter if, if you win, lose, or draw. It doesn't matter if your whole army is off the table dead. It just matters how much you kill. And there are some scenario objectives and stuff like that. Uh, on this, in this game, if you look in the middle of the table, there's a paper cutout of a chimera. Uh, basically, the things like toughness 6 or 7, 10 wounds. And if you, haven't, if you meet it in combat, it'll fight back, stuff like that. Um... And let's see, whoever does the most wounds to it gets 300 victory points, and if it's dead by the end of the game, both of us get 200 victory points. So let's review the lists. Materium starting on the right, has a unit of three bulls. He's got a saber tusk, and then uh, back at the, near the board edge, he's got a unit of a unit of bulls with a slaughter master and a fire belly. And yes, he does have the hell heart in there. Uh, then he's got a unit of six man eaters. Uh, I think they have full command, but they definitely have the flaming banner. They have poison and swift stride. Then he has his unit of iron guts, uh, and there he has his tyrant and a BSB. Uh, then a unit of three yetis, uh, which you just don't see very often. Pretty cool. Unit of six lead belchers. And then on the hill, uh, by the hill, he's got another saber tusk. He's got a unit of three man eaters, immune to psychology and scouting. Uh, I made sure he couldn't get behind my lines, and he didn't want to sit right in front of my lines, so that's where he is. I think all of his man eaters have, have uh, pistols, I'm not positive. And then he has a gorger who uh, will be ambushing. So, uh, I've got a unit of five demigriffs of the Gleaming Pennant way off here to the left in some woods. I've got steam tank number one, steam tank number two. I've got unit of five demis number two. Uh, they have the flaming banner, not that it really matters. Two units of five uh, regular knights, and then a unit of 18 inner circle knights uh, with the standard of discipline. Now, my characters are spread in and around those units. I basically, I call this the stiletto council, <laughs> steel and light. Uh, so obviously, I've got a lot of steel on this list, and then I have a light council. I've got a level four and three level ones. They have some miscellaneous magic items between them. It doesn't really matter. Of course, I have a scroll and stuff like that. Uh, you can see um, there's one, uh, let's see, in the leftmost uh, five-man knight unit, I think that's my level four. Then in the, the red knight unit, I have a level one, and you can see two level ones uh, bottom right. Uh, then I have another unit of five demigriffs on the right-hand side. Yes, this is a, a hard-as-nails list. This is Brawler Bash. That's, that's what it's all about. Uh, the problem I, the, the big problem I have is I... Um, I had one universal battle practice game, and then the night before the tournament, I had my second practice game. So I really have no practice with this list, and that normally is not a good thing for me. I need some practice. So Materum wins the roll to go first. He moves up like you see. Uh, during the magic phase, I actually tried to, I tried to stop Fulminating Flame Cage, and I couldn't. Um, and then I basically gave the magic phase to my opponent, and then he just the dice failed him, and nothing happened to the magic phase. So that's really the only thing that really happened. Uh, not a huge deal. I'm probably just not going to move him though. And then his, um, I, th I assume I don't know. I don't know if it's magic or shooting or whatever. Something took two wounds off of my steam tank. I think it might have been the two d six strength two hits, no armor save. So steam tank is down to eight wounds. Nothing else really happens. We go to Empire turn one. So both uh, both steam tanks trundle forward. They're just going to shoot at that Chimera. I think my opponent, I think he did two wounds to it. Uh, I'd like to make sure that I get more wounds than him and then, um, you know, clean it up by the end of the game. I kind of like where it is, to be honest, because I feel like it's kind of um, hemming in my opponent a little bit. I'd rather have it there than not have it there right now. Uh, over here on the left, these demis charge the saber, t saber tusk. It looks like the lead belters took a... No, no, no. I charged a saber tusk. He fled. He didn't go very far. I caught him. I failed two dangerous terrain. Took two wounds. And um, and then I could have reformed, but I decided just to stay... I, well, I take that back. I th either I failed the reform or something, because um, there's no way I would have reformed so his lead belters could charge me the flank. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, they're like that. It's all good. 
Uh, over here in the magic phase, I um, I killed a saber tusk, which causes a panic test on the small unit of bulls. They run away from the nearest enemy unit, which is my demigriffs on the right. My demigriffs on the right moved up very aggressively um, because the hill is blocking line of sight, so my opponent can't see me, but I can see that bull unit. Um, this, I think, is a, a a mistake that people used to make a lot. Um, most ogre players, I think, try to be very careful, make sure their saber tusks are more than six inches away from anything in case so that they don't have to take panics like this. Uh, in, in killing the saber tusk, I miscast. I roll a small template, and I kill a couple knights. And I, by the way, I broke that guy had a had a staff, and it broke about that time. And then we go to the shooting phase, and I, I uh, both steam tanks hit the chimera. Between the two of them, I do six wounds total. So the chimera only has two wounds left. I've now done six. I'm going to get the 300 extra points for doing more wounds than my opponent has, because he cannot do more wounds than me now. And now I just need to shave off a couple more wounds at some point during the game. Go to Ogre's turn two. Um... I think he tried to charge my demis in the middle with his Iron Gut unit and his Man Eater unit. Both of them needed to needed to roll really high, and uh, they both failed. Thank goodness. I I really I didn't really want that. Uh, let's see. His unit of Yetis charged one of my steam tanks. It kind of zoomed around the, the left side of the Chimera, and I'm not worried about them really doing much damage to the steam tank. But I, at the same time, I don't want them holding that thing up all game long. And, yeah, over here, his uh, man-eaters came charging down off the hill. I'm actually not too worried about this. Uh, I don't like, you know, he, of course, has a charge, and it's down a hill. So he's starting with plus two. We both have banners. And, you know, he has a lot of attacks. Uh, I've got a great armor save. Um, yeah, what I'm really just, I, I don't know mathematically what should happen there. For the most part, I'm not worried. But it certainly is possible he could win combat. And if he does, unless I do a bunch of wounds, I'm not going to be steadfast. And then anything could happen. So, yeah, there are the Yetis charging. And his Gorger comes on the board. And on, a, on my next turn, it makes such a big blunder with uh, relating to the Gorger. But anyway, so the Gorger comes on. And let's see, his Lead Belchers over here shoot at Steam Tank number two, and it takes two wounds. So both my Steam Tanks are at eight wounds. After combat, the Yetis, they can't do anything to my steam tank. Of course, my steam tank doesn't do anything to them. They're just standing there. And we go to Empire turn two. So, yeah, a couple interesting things happen. Well, one, this um, my second steam tank barrels into the Yetis just to get rid of them. I think just with impact hits and then grinding and whatever, um, let's just take care of them. Matter of fact, it looks like steam tank number one has already did his grinding attack. because He's already down, to, uh, down a Yeti. So I'm hoping here to either kill him outright or at least break him from combat. Uh, just get them out of the way. Uh, I take my demigriffs in the middle. I back them up just a little bit. I charge my demigriffs on the right into the flank of the bull unit. Not, not only is it a nine-man bull unit, but it has two both of the spellcasters in there. Um, I had a choice to make, and it, it, was, it was tough. My demis on the right could see his unit of three bulls running away. I could have charged them first and then redirected into his bulls, but I didn't have a BSB within 12 inches, and I just didn't want to take the chance of them failing their redirect. My BSB's unit charges the front of that bull unit, and I'm thinking, this is just fantastic. He won't be steadfast. I'm going to crush that unit, get a bunch of points, and just blow by him on the right. I should have plenty of time to turn around later. Uh, but the problem is, those knights, I think they needed a 10, and they failed it. So then, I'm so wrapped up in, in that thinking about that gorger, that I take all my spellcasters, put them with the unit of knights, and put them right behind my demis. And I forgot about the hell heart. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I could have had these guys all the way back at the edge of the table. Oh my gosh, I just put them right up there for the hell heart. Um, yeah. I take the three knights at the bottom, I turn them to face the, the gorger. Uh, I'm not sure what. what how much good they're going to do. What I didn't think about, not only did I not think about the Hellheart, I didn't think about the possibility of the Gorger charging the flank, the rear of my knight unit, to hold them up. Because that thing is unbreakable. Uh, and it's going to be tough. I think I need sixes to wound them. And had I thought of that, I would have sacrificed one of my level ones, just redirected them with that, and not had to deal with it. So two major, major blunders on Empire turn two. 
there's that. Yeah, there's a fail charge. I can't complain about that. I mean, you're not, you can't count on rolling tens all the time, even with Swift Stride. Hellheart goes off. I felt like I was being carpet bombed. I mean, there's just explosions going on everywhere. Two of my, uh, let's say I had three wizards miscast, and two of them rolled dimensional cascade. <laughs> just, they just, my level four survived. Uh, thanks mostly to a four board save that he was very keen on making. Otherwise, the knight unit and two of my level ones just absolutely exploded. <laughs> blood and guts everywhere. It was horrible. And of course, there's no magic phase. Uh, over here, yeah, when he charged me on his turn, I act, I felt like I really fluffed my attacks against him. Um, but anyway, I think he might have won. I stuck. And then so now we're in Empire turn two. I'm going to win this eventually. Uh, it's just a matter of, of just, you know, killing or breaking these guys. Yeah, after combat, the, the Yetis are destroyed and my steam tanks are now free to do what steam tanks do. And, yeah, we go over here. Um, I think he made a mistake. He moved his... Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. He moved his Hell Heart into base contact as the, the Hell Heart. He had the... Uh, the... Uh, oh, my gosh. The, the, the Lore of Fire guy. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, he moves him to base contact because he has a great weapon. So I just kill him. Uh, his Slaughter Master's over there in base contact, but he's, uh, he's really hard to, uh, to hit and wound. So that's actually hurt me a little bit. I try to allocate nothing against him if I can. Anyway, I won combat by a bunch. My opponent's steadfast, and he sticks. And then after this picture was taken, he turned to face me. So we go to Ogre's turn three. Uh, let's see. I think his man-eaters tried to charge my demis and failed again. Um, and possibly his Iron Guts did the same. I don't know. The Iron Guts are in a bad position because now they're kind of stuck there between the Chimera and the, uh, the man-eaters. His bulls in the very top top right rallied so that wasn't wonderful and here's the gorger so here's where i made blunder number three in this game my bsb basically just has a one-up re-roll a one-up armor save it i just it's been two weeks i don't know if it's a roller or not it doesn't matter but he has a sword where he always wounds on fives so when it came to the combat phase i put him up to the gorger i moved him into base contact so he can have a better chance of getting wounds I didn't know that the gor that the gorger had killing blow, <laughs> and this, uh, damn it! I don't know if that's a blunder. I just didn't know that about the gorger. I guess I could have and should have asked. Just, dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Uh, over here, we're grinding that out. I'm just, you know, I don't really want to sit here all game long, but I think it's just so much easier for me to do wounds than it is for my opponent. So I'm happy enough with that. Uh, my opponent did get troll guts up, so that scared me a little bit because, you know, oh my gosh, what if I get no wounds? And my opponent, you know, all he really has is a rank on me, so. But we were okay. Over here, yeah, those man-eaters just don't want to die. I killed the champion, I killed the other one. There's one guy left, and he refuses to break. And luckily, his gorger does not kill my BSB. So my knights turn around. I charge a small unit of knights into the flank of the gorger just to try to get as many wounds as possible. I uh, charge my demigriffs into the man eaters. I'm not thrilled about this. I'm concerned because if I beat the man, I need to beat the man eaters, or else his iron guts can charge in, and um, you know that's not going to be good. If I beat the man eaters and I overrun, I'm going to hit the the uh, iron guts, and that's not going to go well for me. I just <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, and there's no way I can figure out how to do it in terms of how I line up and which model do I remove if I lose one so that I can overrun into the bulls on the right. So I'm doing it just because it needs to be done. I need to, you know, I'd, I'd rather charge the man-eaters than get charged by them. But yeah. Pictures over here. And then, yeah, the Gorger kills my BSB. Oh, I was so frustrated. I'm doing some wounds to that Gorger guy, but it's like, oh my gosh, he's, you know, six is to wound, and I got to just do, what, four wounds, I think? Because he is never going to go anywhere, and he's just holding up that huge unit of knights that would be really helpful about this time. Uh, so over here on the left, yeah, the, the last man-eater finally dies, and uh, reform these dimmies. Uh, I'm not in a rush to take them into anything, even the Iron Gut unit, because if I, if I make it and do well one round of combat, uh, my opponent reforms and then just chops me up. So, But I certainly like him there as a threat and uh, as a potential combo charge later. Uh, so over here, we beat the man-eaters. Uh, they run away, and I decide not to pursue because I didn't want to charge the um, 
the iron guts. So I reform so that I can charge the bulls just by wheeling. The iron guts can't charge me because the chimera is in the way. Now his tyrant can charge out, but I think if he does that, I'm okay. I, I think I'll, I'll take that risk. That's a lot of attacks going at him. And if, even if he wins, I should be steadfast. And over here, yeah, we're just... I got him down to one wound, but that's <laughs> that's all. So we go to Ogre's turn four. I don't know what caused the lighting to be this way. I think it looks very, very cool. His tyrant does indeed charge out of his unit and charge into the rear of my demigriffs. Now, one thing he better be careful about, if you know, if he's sitting there on my next turn, I've got a steam tank that just might be able to roll high enough, or two steam tanks that can try to roll high enough to hit his tyrant and absolutely crush him. His man-eaters rally. His bulls in the very, very top right, the small unit of three, charge the flank of my uh, demigriffs. That's good and bad. I mean, he gets a he gets a charge and a flank, which helps him. But his solder master is positioned such that I've got a demi that can only attack him until these bulls charge in. Now I can attack those bulls. It makes it actually easier for me to get wounds against them than against the slaughter master. And meanwhile, his iron guts turn to face my unit of demigriffs that's on the left. So I kind of like that. I mean, that unit, I don't know what else they would have done anyway. I mean, they're kind of hemmed in uh, with that chimera. And if he charged in and killed the chimera, well, he couldn't charge his turn anyway. But if he kills the chimera, then he's got two steam tanks that can just counter charge. <laughs> so the chimera's helping him just a little bit now. Yeah, there's that. Uh, let's see, his lead belters in the building shoot at my demis, kill some, forces a panic. I pass it, thank goodness. And, oh, we finally get the wound off the last scourger. But look at that. The tyrant charges the rear of the demigriffs, and he wins combat, and I'm steadfast, and I fail it. And, of course, there's no BSB, because I don't know the rules of gorgers. And then, not only that, he chases them down and gets the whole unit of demigriffs which just seems awful, but at the same time, look what it opened up. Now now my knights can charge his, his general, and he can do a lot of wounds. I mean, he, you know, that's not an auto win for me, but I have a charge, uh, possibly down a hill, I don't remember. I've got two ranks, a banner, I've got a lot of combat res, and a one-up armor save is never really easy to get past. And of course, you can look up the top, my demis against all his bulls, they're all just hanging around killing each other. Yeah, that's just an overview. We go to Empire turn four. Yeah, one steam tank tried to get into his general. That would have been awesome, but he failed. Uh, the other one you can see, I think the other one uh, wasn't able to generate steam points. I was tempted to turn him to the left and start shooting it at the lead belters in the building because cannons against, in, against ogres in a building just tear stuff up. And if you look at the demis on the left, I did not really come closer. I just want to make sure his Iron Guts still get the charge on me. And again, I'm not in a rush to get to the Iron Guts. And after combat, yeah, that was nice. That was nice. He, um, yeah, I'm going to go back up one. Let's see. It looks like he killed two. He only killed, he's only able to kill two knights. I had a bunch of combat res, and we broke and ran him down. And if you look at the demis that were tied up with the slaughter master and his bulls, um, so I don't remember if the general was around or not, but basically I win. I think he may have still been steadfast, but he finally failed it. And because he turned his iron guts around, his BSB was on the wrong side. And so he's more than 12 inches away. So uh, they, they failed their steadfast and I ran him down and got into the flank of his man eaters, which was just beautiful all the way around. I mean, Slaughter Master's gone, Magic is gone, you know, tons of points. And, you know, I get a charge into the flank of a Maneater unit. Now over here, he's still shooting at these guys, does a couple more wounds. And overall, it looks like that. So during his turn, we fought with the Maneaters. Uh, easily won, broke them, but weren't able to catch them. But that's okay, because this happened on, we fought it on my opponent's turn. So we go to Empire turn five. The Demis charge his Maneaters and... Uh, you know, push him off the table, do whatever. Uh, my big knight bus charges his iron guts in the rear, so he's certainly not going to be steadfast. I should win by just a bunch. I took one steam tank into the chimera. My impact hits alone should be able to kill it, and the other steam tank is now going to shoot at the building. Yeah, there's that. And then, yeah, he actually did a bunch of wounds to me, but we did enough wounds to him and broke him, ran him down. So, yeah, that's now it's just turning ugly for the ogres. 
so these ogres are just trying to get points anywhere they can. So I actually wouldn't have thought of this. I don't think I would have thought of this, but he chose to shoot at my demigriffs at the very top middle of this picture uh, because he only needs to do one wound and that's going to force a panic test. I think it's a great idea. Uh, he did cause a wound and then I passed my panic, so he wasn't able to get those points. Yeah, there's those guys. Uh, during the magic phase, this is a level one. He had like um, Shem's Burning Gaze. He, got, he cast an irresistible force at the ogres in the building and in the process put the last wound on himself. So I gave my opponents those points. Uh, between him and the cannon, we killed those guys down to one. I'm trying to think because I wanted him to not fail his panic. I killed five guys somehow, uh, but I still had a way to shoot at him with a steam tank. And he failed his panic, so I couldn't shoot at him. So I got half points of those units, but not all points. And then, you know, that's the game. So again, it doesn't matter how much you win or lose by, it's just how much you kill. So this was a, an outstanding win for the Empire. All my opponent has left is a uh, half, you know, half points, half points for the Lead Belcher unit. And I believe I got all the points for scenario objectives and stuff like that. For Materium, yeah, it was, it couldn't have been a very good scoring game because I just, you know, he got one unit of demis, he got a character, he got, well, he actually got a bunch of characters <laughs> and a couple of knight units, but yeah. Anyway, just a real fun game. I really thought that that could have gone uh, either way. Um, I certainly felt like I was I was trying to help it go against me with the, with a few mistakes I made early on, but uh, yeah, unfortunate uh, for Materium. Uh, the, the bad thing for me, of course, is now it puts me on like table three at this tournament, <laughs> which I did not really want to be there this early in the tournament. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey everyone, once bitten here. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. As you know, YouTube has several functions you can use to interact with videos such as this. Uh, you can like the video, you can leave a comment, you can favorite the video. Uh, I want you to know that, that I appreciate it when you do things like that. It feels much more interactive than simply me talking to a screen. So if you're willing to do so, please like, comment, and favorite the videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want, and you certainly are welcome to share this video on your blog or other websites if you are so inclined. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.